Hey y'all, it's Kayla. So today I'm here to show you guys how I start my seeds and some of the tips and tricks that I have. Oh, this one looks really weird on my hair. Maybe that's makeup, I don't know. But some of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way for seed starting. So the first thing that I really wanna talk about is your seed starting mix, um, your soil that you use. I just buy a seed starting mix. Um, some seeds are heavy feeders, some seeds are not heavy feeders during the germination phase the fertilization that they or the fertilizer that they need is not that important so i um just get a seed starting mix usually it's not quite as strong as some other things you don't want to accidentally like burn your seedlings and then i fertilize later on in the process depending upon which plants are heavy feeders or not um so i just picked up a basic one from the feed store here just to get going this is i usually get an organic seed starting mix this one is not organic I don't think I don't know um, but I just got it so that I can go ahead and show you guys I'll be making a trip into town hopefully next week to really get what I like to grow with but I wanted to go ahead and get this to get started and show you guys because I know many of you guys are going ahead and starting right now and you are in a much warmer climate than I am I'm in a zone USDA 4a my last frost date is June 7th so yeah, uh, <laughs> we're really starting. So like the things that I'm really going to be starting right now are all of my onions, anything oniony get started right now. My tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, all of that stuff is all gonna get started. Um, I usually start 12 to 14 weeks before my last frost date. So we're around that like 12, 13 week mark right now. So I don't mind going ahead and starting these, set, these for you and showing you guys how this all works. And even if I was above that, like I would go ahead and start something for you guys. Um, just so you can see. So the first thing is when you get your potting mix, that soil is dry mo most of the time. Um, I don't know if you have ever put dry soil in something and then tried to water it. But if you have, you'll notice that like the water just kind of like beads up and rolls off and it doesn't really mix in. So the first step for me is making sure my soil is nice and moist before putting it into my trays or my pots or anything like that. So um, I have, this here is the sun grow here. Let me, I'm gonna switch the camera around for you guys and let you guys look at what I've got. So you can see, I don't know what it is exactly, but yeah, one second. Okay, so I have my camera on. This is the SunGrow Black Gold. I have never used this before. I know zero about it. But it says it has excellent germination, so we'll see. I just got a really small bag. Usually I get like a giant, giant bag of things. Does it tell me what's in it? Ingredients. Oh, let me read it in English. So it's peat moss. Uh, perlite and organic wedding agent. So maybe it is organic without the organic um, thing. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't have all of those extra. Here's the. In, wait, let me find them again. Ingredients up here. So Canadian sphagnum peat moss. Hey, Canadians. I'm supporting you. Perlite, which perlite is um, the little white balls. An organic wetting agent, which is yucca extract. Okay, so it's got yucca, which I'm assuming will uh, hold on to the, wa the water and keep it in there better. So light. Okay, so I am going, oh, OMRI. Organic Materials Review Institute. Okay, so yeah, it is organic. Yay me, I got something organic or mostly organic. So I'm going to zoom out some for you guys. We're gonna do this one-handed because I don't have anything fancy. I have a big bucket in the sink. We're gonna pour her in the big bucket. See the little white bits? That's perlite. In the bucket we go. In. Oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of soil. I, I don't know if I'm weird or not, but I love it. Sorry, you guys, for any kind of crazy, shaky images. I'm trying to hold and do this, and yeah, I only I'm doing this one armed. This is not as elegant as it could be, but you know, it's okay. So let's see if we can get it to show you what happens when you just add water. 
No, this one's, yeah, kind of. See how it starts bubbling up? Let's go over here. It'll start bubbling up. Now imagine you adding water with all of your seedlings in there and it was dry. Your seeds would get displaced, which would be kind of crappy because they could get too deep. Yeah, see here down there? See how it fluffs it up some? So we want to really get the soil nice and moist. Get our hands in here. Definitely needs more water. I wish, right now, I really wish I had one of those tap sinks. Really. We're just gonna get it all soaked. All right, see how that does. Yeah, I think that should probably be good. Let's see. We don't want any dry, oh, maybe I was wrong. That sphagnum moss and the perlite, like really, they suck it up. Oh, it feels nice. I like this one. I might go buy a bigger bag of this. We'll see how these seeds germinate. All right. So I feel like we're getting close to what we need. Let me do a little bit more water. I have this lovely feature on my thing. I like to be able to make it look like a rain thing. This is how I water a lot of things in my sink. Also, farm size sinks. Okay. Yeah, see how we're still getting, um, I don't know if you guys can really tell. Like here is pretty wet. And then we have like dry pockets. Let me get my hair out of there. So we don't want any of those dry pockets. We want it to be, yeah, I think I'm gonna let this sit for a couple minutes and see where we're at and then I'll come back and check in with you guys. I'm in the middle of cooking lunch too. So this is what I've got. You can pick it up. It holds together, but it doesn't squish out a lot of extra water. It's dripped some, but that's okay. Cause like I said, it's probably gonna soak in some. So we're gonna let this kind of sit in the bucket for a few minutes and soak together. And then I will show you what we're dealing with. Oh my goodness, this is already seven minutes in. It's gonna be a really long video, you guys. I apologize. Hopefully it's educational. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. The seed starting mix is ready down here. It's got, it's plenty moisturized and wet enough. So I have my cell trays here. These are 30. 30 cells in a tray, I think. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Just kidding. 40 cells in a tray. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to be starting my onions today. That is the one that I actually do need to start right about now. So I have three varieties of onions. Um, and I'm trying to grow enough onions to last me an entire year. So my onion varieties I have here, these yellow sweet Spanish. These are not a storage variety. These, I'm just going to plant a few of these to have in the late summertime. That's when they should be about ready. So these are not a storage variety. These are not gonna last me a year, the yellow seed Spanish. These are the ones that get to like five pounds. I don't know if you guys have been to the grocery store and seen them, but these things are like as big as my face sometimes. So that's what that one is. Um, the next one I have are these Weathersfield Red, these are a storage red variety and can last up to a year depending on storage conditions. Um, after harvest, we'll go over storing and all of that for onions, but right now we're just gonna focus on seed starting. So these are Weathersfield Red. And then I don't grow as many of these as I do my white or yellow onions. I don't use red onions as often. And then these are the ones that I will really be growing a lot of. These are Alyssa Craig. They are a storage variety of yellow white onions. Um, oh, did I get these wrong? Wait. Sorry. I messed this up. These are the ones that I'm going to be growing a lot of. The Alyssa Craig are the giant ones the size of my face. These I will be growing a few of. These are my long storing ones. Sorry, you guys. Um, so yellow sweet Spanish will be, yeah, with good storage quality. So that's what I'm going to be putting in this tray. I'm going to be doing two trays of these. 
the way that I grow my onions and I have just had luck with and was taught this from like a, a tiny human age is I cluster plant onions. Um, where I was was heavily influenced, like where I used to live was heavily influenced by Native American culture and they did a lot of planting in like clusters and hills and things like that and that's how I was taught. So that's what I do with a lot of my things. You'll see it when I do my onions, when I do corn, when I do squash and things like that. I have a lot more cluster, hill planting, whatever you want to call it, than like traditional European style row planting. So that's how I'm going to be doing my onions. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. So my next big tip for planting plants, let me go ahead and open this because my hands are about to get really dirty. That way it's easy to get in here. Um, I have my bucket of soil down here. Oh, it's heavy. Let me scoot back and grab her. Uh, soil. So these are my cells here. I'm gonna give this one more toss. It feels nice and conditioned. When I squeeze it, a little bit of water comes out, but not a lot, which is just fine. That's exactly what I want. So what I'm going to be doing is going through each cell, dropping in soil, and I just start by lightly putting it in. I'm not putting a ton in right now. Um, so let me go ahead, get these all filled. And I found it really helpful just to kind of run your hand across it. It kind of just smooths everything out. So I can just spread a bunch on here. I'm gonna have to clean this table later. But you know, part of planting. I don't have a good planting space yet. One day I'd really like a greenhouse, but for now I'm gonna plant on the dining room table and just clean a lot. Okay, so almost done with this. And then I'm gonna show you guys my next big tip. And I'm sure many of you, if you've gardened before and not really thought about it, I'm sure you have run across this problem. Okay, almost there, let's kind of. All right, I'll set my soil down. So as you guys can see, it looks like it's full to the top. All of these look nice and full. They're not. As time goes on, if I were to just leave things as is, these cells would slowly sink down to like half of the amount of soil. So what I do is I take two fingers and I gently pat this in. You don't want to compact it super tight because you still want it to be easy enough for the roots to get through, but you want to push out any kind of air bubbly things we got going on. And some of these, as you can see, like this one, oh, I should continue patting. Some of them pat down really far, some of them not quite as far. And again, I'm barely putting any pressure, just lightly patting these down. down here we go we can see like some of these look pretty decent some of these are you know pretty deep down in there so we're gonna grab a little bit more soil and again just gently spread it over pop it out from some of these that are decently filled get it around the edges I find that the edges are the ones that usually need the most it's just a little bit harder to pack it down well not pack it but get it in there to start with Oh, there's, there's potting mix all over the floor. It's okay. That's what brooms are for. That is what brooms are for, you guys. Okay. So, now that I'm fairly happy with how full these are, we're going to actually plant our seeds. Now, this part differs from, let me pull some of this up, from what a lot of other people do. Um, I've just found that this is the 
best way for me to do it and everyone like you everyone has their garden preferences and what works for them so this works for me it might not work for you but I find that it's especially helpful if you have little hands involved so I again I'm gonna pour some seeds into my hand Um, and I don't poke holes. I don't do it. I don't like it. I don't do it. Um, little hands poke holes too deep and a lot of the time I have my kids helping me. So this is the way that I do it. Sorry, I'm just leveling everything out, making sure we're good. So with my onions, I take four to five seeds per cell and I just sprinkle them over top. And this is the cluster planting aspect. I'm planting more than I need per cell. The cool thing about onions is that as they grow up and like when you're dealing with squash and some other things that like vine out and aren't necessarily like, uh, I'm trying to think of the words. They aren't super compacted together as far as planting goes. Um, when you cluster plant like onions, squash, things like that, the way that they grow like forces each plant apart. So it's okay. That was two, three, four. All right. So again, I said, I think I said I can get about um, 200 plants per tray. And when I deal with onions, I would like to have roughly uh, 400-ish onions. That should get me through the winter and into the next year. And that's, you know, I try to say like uh, 200 onions, or 200, two onions a day is what I'd like to have. Again, just sprinkling gently on top. I want four to five seeds per cell. And if I end up with more than that, that sprout, it, you can pluck them and have green onions, scallions. All right, so now that I have my onion seeds in there, again, super simple. I'm just going to take another big handful, place it in the center and just kind of wipe it around. I don't want to bury them too deep. I don't want too much going on. I just want to lightly cover the tops of the onions. I want it very, very loose. I want to make sprouting for these as easy as possible. Um, and this is how I do it for not just onions, all plants, just very loose, very easy to come through, just enough to cover it and keep that seed moist. And that is my biggest goal. I just want to keep my onion seed moist. And then after they sprout, I'll come back in and pat the soil down and make it look a little bit neater. But yeah, that is the basics of how I start my seeds or how I plant them to start. Now, um, I talked about earlier how when you have a seed starting mix, you don't necessarily want it super um, nutrient dense because some seeds like it, some seeds don't. So once they, the seeds actually germinate, depending on if the plant is a heavy feeder or not, you can add fertilizer to it. I use a liquid fertilizer that I mix into the water. Now, one of the reasons I do that um, is I bottom feed my plants, so they really, really soak in the water. So bottom feeding is my next tip. You can pour your water on top using a little watering can, but when you do that, you run the risk of pouring too much water and displacing your seeds so that they don't germinate properly. Bottom watering is what I would do is pick up my little tray and see here there are no holes in this. So I would pour water directly into this, let my seeds sit in here for 30, 40 minutes, and then or let this, this part sit back in here for 30 or 40 minutes and then let it drain. Like I'll take the seeds back out and drain it out. And that way you'll notice like when you do water them, you'll see the soil soaks the water up from the bottom up and it'll be completely saturated with as much as it needs. 
and then you drain the excess water off so you're not overwatering your plants, you're not displacing your seeds, you've got it all pretty covered. So that is how I water my seedlings. Now onions can germinate at a warmer temperature. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the seed mat. When I do things like my cabbage, um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, anything like that, they do not get put on the seed mat. They like a cooler temperature. Cilantro, that's one that most people don't think of. Cilantro likes a cooler temperature. All of those things will get germinated, not on the seed mat, just below it. Minimal lighting, all of that is fine because they're a cold weather crop, so they need less light and less heat. So now that these are ready, I'm gonna pop my little lid on and I will move it over under my, um, onto my heat mat. And I really don't turn the light on. I don't know what the day is for germination for this particular variety is. Sprout in seven to 14 days. So I'll probably put the light on in five days. Um, I'm not gonna put it on before then. And then they'll just pop up and I'll show you guys how I do, what I do with my onions after they start sprouting, once they've sprouted well. But onions are one of the first things that you're gonna wanna grow or start. Um, if you wanna start them from seed, I find it easier. I like starting my onions from seed it's a lot. You can order onion sets, which are like just tiny little onion sprouts ready to plant in the ground. I like seed, again, because I do cluster planting. It makes cluster planting super simple and easy. Um, and then the other thing with onions is that if you don't start them early enough, it's gonna get too hot too fast for them. So onions, 12 weeks in advance. I, it says 10 to 12, I, I say minimum of 12 weeks in advance. I'm doing 13 to 14 right now. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning, but I'm USDA zone 4A. My last frost date is June 7th. Today is March 2nd. I'm starting my onions on March 2nd. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the rest of these onions done and they will go on the germination mat and start germinating. Once these pop up next week, I'll be doing my peppers, onions, and eggplants. Those will be the next ones that get germinated. And then I have, let me kind of brush my hands off some here. Um, I have a bunch of things that will be going here soon um, that I'm wanting to get started right away. So I've got lavender, which will be germinated early, especially for my zone. Um, in a lot of places, lavender can be a perennial, meaning it comes back every year. In my zone, most of the time, it is not a perennial. So I grow it every year as an annual. Um, I'm hoping that it might self-seed and grow itself, but we'll see. Wild bergamot, this one will come back. Again, it's an annual, its whole life cycle is one year, but hopefully this one will self-seed. Uh, all of my tomatoes will be coming, well, I'll be planting leeks. Leeks are getting planted this week with onions. I have columbine, a couple types of columbine, which I'll be planting inside. Again, these can be sown directly outside, but I just want uh, to get everything going because my climate is extremely harsh. We're a high desert out climate, very hard to grow stuff in. So I try to start as much indoors as I possibly can. Um, I've got salvia, which I love. Snapdragons will be starting. Celery, surprisingly celery, you should start indoors. I have a super cool pink celery because this is how I shop. It's a fun color, it's coming home. Um, eggplants, somewhere else on my table, I have all of my varieties of peppers, I have more onions, I have more tomatoes, I have so much stuff. This was just what was in reach right now. So I think that is pretty much what I've got going on for seed starting. So number one, pre-wet your soil. My soil is wet, I don't need to water it again. It's good. Those seeds are good for a couple of days here. Wherever you are, you know, pay attention to your soil. If it looks like it's starting to dry out, go ahead and water it. Number two, place your soil in and pat it down at first until you're pretty good, uh, until it's pretty full in there. You don't want to pat it down too much. You don't want it to be super packed, but you don't want it so loose that it like slowly shrinks down over time. Number three, what I do, again, I sprinkle the seeds on and then I lightly cover with soil on top. If you have had great success with poking little holes and 
then covering up the little holes. Keep doing it your way. Don't, don't change because this is what I do. This is just what works for me. What works for you might be completely different and that is okay. People have different gardening styles. 100% okay. Um, number four, the number four, I think I'm on four. If I'm not on four, oh well, it's four now. Number four, bottom water. I cannot stress how important that one is. I feel like if you haven't done bottom watering before, you should just try it. Just try it and see how it works for you. I have had much better success and much higher germination rates with bottom watering than I have just like pouring water on top. My seeds go everywhere, they float around, they like have a party, they get together. Like what once was a flower is now a tomato. Like yeah, bottom water. Try it, I promise it's wonderful. And yeah, those are my basic seed starting tips for you guys. So hopefully this is helpful, especially if you are a beginner gardener. Um, I really, really hope that this helps give you an idea of where to start and what to do. I know that so many of you guys are probably way ahead of me on seed planting and I wish I could just like jump right in too, but you know, I'm already a week or two early from what I should be planting. So that's why I'm doing onions right now and then we'll move on to peppers and tomatoes and things like that. But those of you with a longer growing season, you can probably, you'll be okay. And again, those of you in much more Southern zones, don't, don't start onions now, don't do it. Don't start from seed right now. Get onion sets or wait and fall plant onions um, because it's gonna get too warm for your onions and you don't want that onions like a little bit cooler weather. Uh, so yeah, you can find onion sets online. I'm not really sure who sells them because I have not bought from, I have not bought sets before. I've always seed started my onions. So if you know good onion set people, just drop it in the comments. And um, so like I said, this is gonna go over here next to me in my seed starting setup. If you missed that video, I will link it. I don't know if I have the ability to link in the top yet. If I can, I'm gonna link it up top. If not, I think I can add it to the end of this video. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if I have to have like a certain number of subscribers. But thank you guys for joining me. If you're coming from my Homesteading Woman group, it would be super helpful if you guys would subscribe to the channel because once I get a thousand subscribers, then I can use my phone to do live videos and I could do like so much more things live versus trying to use my laptop to do live videos, which freaking sucks. But really, I just need a thousand of you guys to subscribe so I can do live videos better. So that would be really, really helpful um, to be able to teach you guys a little bit more. That's all I really care about. We can stop at a thousand. I don't care. I just want to be able to use that feature to be able to teach you guys a little bit better. So that is my seed starting tips and tricks that I like to use and what I know how to do. And um, next time, if you guys want me to see, like show you my seed starting for other plants, I mean, it's very similar when I do tomatoes and it pretty much, so like I said, the things I cluster plant, onions get cluster planted. And then when I deal with corn and squash, those get cluster planted outside. And I'll show you that when that comes to time for me. Everything else is pretty much one to two seeds per cell with the same method, just not quite as many seeds. So it's not really that different or varied. But if you think it would be helpful to you, let me know and I am more than happy to do more videos about seed starting for different varieties of plants. If there's like something specifically that you want me to cover, just ask and I'm so, I'm, I'm more than happy. And then if it's not long enough to do like a huge giant video, I can do like a little clip and pop it in the group, um, probably in the, Mighty Networks group because it's easier for me to put stuff in there than it is in the Facebook group. I cannot for some reason download videos to Facebook right now. It keeps crapping out on my phone. So yeah, so I will, if there's something you want to see, I'll pop it in the Mighty Networks group. But yeah, thank you all so much for joining me and seeing how I plant seeds. This is probably like a 30 minute video, but hey, hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you guys have learned something and I hope to see you guys on the next video. I am not sure what I'm doing yet next or what you guys will see next. Clover is thinking about having babies still. I need to separate hens and roos outside. So I'm probably going to do a video on that to show you the differences between hens and roos for my chickens. And um, I'm going to be going and starting building my raised beds. So I kind of have like a whole bunch of stuff going on. And I kind of want to throw in some of like the Farm Passion Friday things too and like all of my girly crap. I know you guys really enjoyed like the ribbon and the hair and a couple of you asked me 
to do a video on that, so I might do that one day. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but thank you all so much for joining me today, and I really hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.